You know, man, when I was a young man in high school, you believe in an eye. I wanna play football for the coach. And all those older guys, they said he was mean and cruel, but you know, I wanna play football for the coach. I looked it up and I found it almost hard to believe that we're coming up on 10 years um, since Lou Reed passed. I think it was October of 2013. And I thought about that the other day when I was out looking for some records and stumbled upon a sealed copy of Coney Island Baby. Coney Island Baby is one of the few uh, Lou solo LPs where I don't have an original pressing. I have the 2016, you know, supposedly uh, over overseen by Lou and remastered, you know, with his input. Um, it sounds good, but I have all of those RCA albums. They all sound great. They were all mastered at Sterling Sound. And I've been looking for an original pressing of Coney Island Baby to add to my collection. Um, a funny period for Lou Reed. It was released uh, at the end of 1975 and recorded, I think, over two months, maybe October, November of 75. Remember, in July, he had put out Metal Machine Music. And it was something out of left field. Um, I've listened to parts of it. I don't have I don't have a copy of that record, and I'm not planning on getting one. <laughs> um, RCA, you know, his management told Lou, "Hey, man, you need to go back and make a rock and roll record quick," <laughs> and and that's what he set out to do. And for for this record, um, this is very very reminiscent of the. Uh, Velvet Underground's 1969 self-titled album, and then Loaded. The the songs, Lou's singing is fantastic on this thing, and it it kind of harkens back to that period, kind of a return to form for Lou Reed, and he was singing melodically. He had come up with eight fantastic songs, and in those songs, Lou Reed revealed a side of him that hadn't really come out yet, and that was the vulnerable Lou Reed. So, you know, there was nostalgia, you know, talking about uh, playing football in high school and just wanting to play for the coach. There was, you know, he was dedicating that, he actually dedicated that song to uh, Rachel Humphreys, a uh, person that he was dating at the time. L look it up. <laughs> he had Doug Ewell on this album, who played bass guitar, I think, on three songs. And an excellent lead uh, guitar player, Bob Culloch. You know, Bob Culloch originally, I think, he auditioned uh, to be the lead guitar player originally for Kiss, and they decided to go with Ace Frehley instead. But Bob Culloch is an amazing guitar player. Recently passed a few years ago as well. Coney Island Baby is an absolute classic song. It, I think it clocks in at just over six and a half minutes. And languid, excellent lyrical guitar lines. Uh, Lou, Lou's lyrics are fantastic. And I remember I saw Joseph Arthur. Uh, if you know Joseph Arthur, he was on Letterman. And it might have been after Lou Reed died, but he did a cover version of Coney Island Baby, which was just fantastic. And I think Mike Mills and Peter Buck were with him um, for that performance. I think Joseph Arthur was doing a, a run of shows, but I just remember being really struck at that cover version. And, you know, this is a long time ago, but it made me go back and revisit that album. So... I've always had Coney Island Baby in the back of my mind, and um, I did pick up that reissue. I think it sounds good. Uh, it's a clean, flat pressing, but 
like I said, I've, I've been looking for an original. So, lo and behold, here we go. Not only did I find an original, I found one of those RCA, you know, it's got the stamped promo in the corner. Also, this is very subtle, but the reissue has got more of a clean white, you know, almost like a typing paper, uh, copy paper white to it. And this is more of a subtle cream color. Now, you know, this is a, a, a record that was released in 1976. And guess what? This thing is still sealed. I just did the math and we're talking about a record that is, uh, if this was, um, you know, put out in January or February of 1976, we're talking about 47 plus years right now. Still sealed. Uh, shrink wrap amazingly intact. Corners are crisp. Uh, I paid up for this thing. I usually, you know, you'll stumble across sealed records now and then. And usually they're, they can be overpriced if you're at a, a proper record shop. Um, sometimes you can find these things at like, uh, you know, the half price bookstores and, and the other uh, secondhand Charles chain that they're affiliated with. I've found a lot of sealed records there. And, you know, you're paying three or four or seven or eight dollars for them. But I paid more for this. And, and the reason I did is because I love this album. Um, I'm basically a Lou Reed completionist almost to a point. I, I don't care about metal machine music. Uh, but anyway, let's let's open this up and take a look at this record. All right. Okay, there we go. There we go. Looks fantastic. This thing is nice and flat. You know, you're always concerned about maybe a warp issue with a uh, with a record um, that's been sealed for all that time. This thing looks really good. That gold RCA Victor label. I do see a stamped uh, H, very, very faint H uh, in side A, so that tells me this was a Hollywood pressing. I've had real good luck with RCA Hollywood pressings. Um, I've, got a, I've got a Hall of Notes uh, record, Hollywood press, it sounds fantastic. And then I also have um, Station to Station Hollywood pressing, sounds amazing. Now the song kicks. Uh, last song on side A. That is a crazy song that is about, it clocks in about six minutes, just uh, not quite as long as the title track. And it's like you're eavesdropping on a house party and kind of creepy Lou is back and he's, you know, the lyrics they're talking about you know, stabbing someone and, and, you know, seeing the blood come down their chest is better than sex. Uh, it is a crazy, creeptastic song, but, you know, it's something that, that you know, was in and around uh, Lou, you know, during the early to mid-1970s. Um, the other songs are all... Not, that that's a good song. It it just sends a chill down your spine when you hear that thing. Um, but everything else on this record I love, and uh, it's it's nice to find a sealed pressing. I'm gonna put this through um, the Hum and Guru. <laughs> I'm gonna put this through the I'm gonna put this through the Hum and Guru right now, and uh, I'll come back and let you know how this record sounds. Hey, so here's the update. Uh, first of all, I found the original uh, hype sticker for the uh, the reissue from 2016. And I just cleaned up the original that I just opened earlier, put it on the turntable, super pleased, dead silent vinyl. 
perfectly flat, no problems with it being sealed and who knows where it was for the last 40, 47 years. Um, very good recording. Uh, it's got drive, it's got punch, it's got a good sound stage. And um, hey, like I said before, I paid up a little bit for this. Um, I don't usually go looking for sealed records. This thing just happened to show up uh, the other day in a local shop and knew that I had to bring that home and I'm, I'm super pleased that I did. So that is basically an upgrade situation for me. I'm probably going to let the reissue go, maybe list it on Discogs, uh, bring it into a local store for credit um, to be determined, but um that's today revisiting coney island baby 1976 release from lou reed recorded in late 1975 check it out if you haven't heard it there are some fantastic songs if you like the velvet underground you're gonna find a lot of familiar feel and tone and great singing from lou take care